Hi, everyone out there. I hope you're seeing me. We're doing a quick test today. This is Evo. I wanted you to have a few moments to uh, get a chance to come and say hi to me, uh, but also to uh, show you a little bit of what we've been working on behind the scenes. Um, so I am streaming to you today from a tool we use called StreamYard. And this tool is one of a half dozen tools we use to both stream live and also to record talks. Um, so I have been uh, earlier today uh, providing a, a quick training for some guests and uh, they are speaking at a virtual conference what will be six weeks from now. So um, this video and, and everything I've been working on today is generally a training process. It is helping people to understand how virtual events work, um, but it is also understanding how to prepare presentations for interactive media and interactive events, uh, such as a virtual conference or a virtual film market. Uh, so I got a chance today to do some very interesting work with uh, filmmakers, with producers, uh, with people who are working across different media markets. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit of the kinds of tools that I've been working on. Um, this, by the way, is a tool called StreamYard. I'm going to show you a little bit of what I'm doing here in the window, um, but I'm also going to talk you through a little bit. And there's a URL in the description. So if you're seeing this live as we are, um, you can join me in this cast. I can also see your comments pop up um, as long as we can all see each other in Facebook. So what I'm gonna do right now is make sure that we're live in Facebook. And if we're live in public, then I can also make it available so that everyone can see each other's comments. So this is how we do a Q&A space. I'm gonna see if I can just change permissions on our stream live as we go. Um, so I am basically in two windows at once. If you're noticing any glitchiness, that's why I'm editing my audience in Facebook while I'm also live in the other window. So nice to see you, Rob. Hi. So I'm going to show you what that looks like now. Hi, Rob. See, that's what it looks like when we go and we maybe do a talk like this or we exit full screen. I can also put myself full screen as well and I can hide any of these sessions. So there's a number of other tools that we use here um, in terms of overlays, uh, backgrounds, and the like. So this is very useful for anything that needs to resemble something like uh, what you would do on stage at a conference. Um, for example, I'm gonna do a couple of things here. And uh, it looks like we have our first caller in. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of what that looks like. Um, Rob, so just so you know, uh, when you go to that URL, you're coming into basically uh, my production studio and then I can make you live when I'm ready. So uh, Rob, if you wanna go live with me, I'm gonna add you to the stream. All right, so now here is a two person setup with you, Rob, and I think you can see yourself. There'll be just a bit of delay, but not too much. And then we can begin to take questions together. It's nice to see you too, Jefferson. I am doing very well and thanks for asking. Um, and it looks like we have one other guest in the room. And uh, Steve, if you want to enable your webcam, I can also bring you into the stream if you'd like. Um, so this is a little bit of how this tool works. Um, those of us who are in the StreamYard window can then chat to each other. We have private chat. Um, need to mute one or the other window. Ooh, yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, is it coming through double for you, Steve? Um, let me know. Hey, Brad, I'm going to go ahead and add you to the stream if you're ready. How do you feel about that? You want to give me a heads up? Okay, I'm adding Brad Templeton and Rob Maury. Welcome and thank you for testing with me. I wanted to show you just a couple of formats that we can use. I don't have audio on Brad. 
Brad, we've got no volume. I've got Rob muted, but I've got Brad not working with audio yet. Um, this is a really great way to test, though, as you can see. Um, Steve, do you want to test bringing in to stream? It's your call. Um, and we'll see how this works in terms of having a conversation space that can also stream. Now, um, do we have volume on any of you? Let's see how this works. I don't have volume on Brad. That's good to know. <laughs> I trust if anyone can sort this out, it's Brad. Um, so I want to show you just a little bit of the formatting that we can do here. Um, so obviously, I'm screen sharing right now. So you can see a little bit of what that looks like. Um, I just wanted you to kind of get a sense of what these tools can be used for um, and how this like comes together in terms of package, right? So let's say we're doing our broadcast and we've got all these pieces together and I want it to, you know, come together for a Q&A. This is how we might do that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those of you from the stream. Um, and I can always bring you back in as well. Um, those of us who have come into the streaming room can see that they're basically in a green room where they can chat to each other right now. So they have a back channel basically with each other. Let's say I have them as panelists for a conference. I can then just bring Brad on when he's ready and Brad and I can do our Q&A. And then I can go to Rob next and just bring Rob in. So um, figuring out how to bring these elements together one at a time so that you've got something that um, allows for the ease of Zoom, but the flexibility of like a cloud TV streaming solution, um, this solves for a very specific gap, especially in virtual events. Uh, right now, uh, some of us are using things like OBS Studio and it's, it's quite difficult. And there's something awful outside going on in my house. So um, I wanted you just to get a sense of, so this text is not public and just green room people. Yeah, so we have a back and forth here. We have a back channel for private chat, and then we have the public chat that happens in Facebook. And we can do this across many different platforms. So I can be streaming and multicasting to LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Periscope, uh, Twitch, all at the same time. So that's just a little bit of what this looks like. And I, I also just wanted to take a few moments and, and make eye contact with some of you that I hadn't had a chance to see recently. Um, this tool is pretty fun to use if you're looking for something that's gonna give you some flexibility. Um, you can obviously try different types of backgrounds easily like I'm doing right now. I and then send it away. I can do some very simple overlay effects um, using transparency and such. So, um, or I can do my big title there. Let's say I wanna pull everything off my screen and just have me and my name or not. So I wanted you just to get a little sense of how that works. And uh, it's good to see you, Corey. It is awesome. It's a lot of fun to use. Um, but also, if you need to do interactive trainings with a small group of people, um, you can have the streaming to a, uh, a smaller group or, or a private channel where just a few people are seeing it. So that's a fun way to begin to play with these kinds of layered effects as well. Um, I'm gonna be recording a handful of these sessions and cutting them together into tutorials. So um, anytime you wanna come and participate and jump in, let me know. Hey, uh, Steve, do you wanna test your sound again? Can I bring you in one more second? I'm curious whether it's gonna work this time. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah I, I hear you. <laughs> Before I was muted, I, I've, been, uh, I've been actually on conference calls since like very early in the morning and I was going to like take a personal break and then this this popped in. It looked really interesting. So here I am. It's, 
Great to see you. Carry on. This is just a nice, quickie little test for us. And uh, we're doing a handful of conferences this fall where we're using tools like StreamYard to do the uh, interactive Q&A portion of virtual conferences. Yeah, if I had my I have other camera set up, so it would be interesting to see if it's compatible with external cameras and stuff. Probably is. Yes, but it is. And uh, actually, I have a slide that shows you a little bit of that. Um, this guy right here um has a tool and a set of videos so if you're seeing my uh, screen share right now i'm gonna bring it up for you here this guy he is crazy but what you're seeing here is two webcams and then what he's screen sharing inside Streamyard is all of those overlay effects uh nested in there so um nice. yes you can do a double webcam setup with, with this tool pretty easily. It's, um, they have an HD version for 45, 50 bucks a month or a, um, a lower cost version for those of you who just need to do a few hours a month. Oh, so you have to pay a bump for the HD to get high definition? Right, right. Okay. They just released the HD version. It's basically like a nice little tight TV. Fun 4K. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did, yeah, so I here's another setup, by the way. I just want to show people like a little bit of a sense of what this can look like um, if they're trying to create their own effects and shows. Steve, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to go ahead and pull you out. And it's really great to see um, all of you. I'm not going to um, keep going on for too long. But if you wanted to ask questions or anything, Kent, I, I'm totally with you. I, I love it too. Um, using it for um, small group interactive experiences as well as the Q&A portion of conferences, it, it is working really well. Um, so uh, Laura, you asked uh, specifically about um, pros and cons versus Zoom for Facebook Live. Um, now, I don't find Zoom to be very effective for live casts of, of different varieties, uh, partially because you're you're capped at a smaller resolution. You're, you're at this tinier window. It's going to look grainy if you try and do it on a bigger screen. Um, but also, uh, it's, it's just really not designed for that, um, whereas this gives me the opportunity to do a number of sort of interactive Q&A components here. Um, I could even do this across LinkedIn and Facebook at the same time. Um, so you're not necessarily stuck to one medium. Um, you can go across many of them. Hey, Brad, do you want to try your sound again? You want to see what this is like? We're, we're going to give it one more whirl. I'm curious whether we're going to get are you, are you not here? Did you not hear me? There are some issues with uh, Streamcast audio. Are you yeah. hearing, you're you're hearing that now? Well, so it's a WebRTC program, and WebRTC is built into the browser, and not everyone does as good a job. Actually, StreamYard's pretty decent. There are some really terrible programs, but StreamYard, uh, I was having some problems. I have a complex setup here with seven different microphones and uh, six different speakers and uh, several cameras and so on, and it does tend to confuse a lot of the programs. You're, you're likely having the same problem I had this morning where my programs were fighting for different cameras at different times. I was trying yeah. to show people yeah. three different tools. Uh, we basically did a side-by-side -side of OBS Studio, StreamYard, and, and Zoom this morning. And uh, Zoom likes to monopolize uh, that, that contact, and it can crash everything else around you. Well, I mostly, uh, use, I mostly use this with Zoom. And of course, in Zoom, people can make your face full size and get the full resolution from it. So it is um, the most robust tool. And so there are certain circumstances where it's absolutely the right choice. Now, what I have done here, this is OBS, which you just mentioned. Uh, and I give my presentations. I never use screen share. I never show my slides to people and put my face into a tiny box. Instead, I put my slides into my world. And so I'm able, this is Prezi, but it could be PowerPoint. It could be anything you need. And then I have a setup so that I can 
affect, uh, you know, how big I am and I can be full size and talk to you or I can be very tiny. So I'm not blocking very much of my slides. Uh, I can get rid of myself if I need to. And that's just the beginning of a lot of different cool things that I can do with that. And I'll tell you that um, I just find it very isolating when people share their slides, take over the screen, and then the person talking to you becomes almost invisible. So I'm going to bring us back together here, and you can see what that looks like when I do a couple I, of different I, 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 I got to come over here. Yeah, that's that okay. One, no, no, for that's example, okay. that this no, no, setup no. looks a little bit better than the other one did. No, no, no. I'll make myself uh, big, and you, you can shrink me now, so that's fine. Well, you look great. You look great. Um, the uh, configurability of this StreamYard tool versus a full OBS solution is um, – it's limiting for those people who are really into like fine tuning what Brad just did, for example, right? Making himself big and small. Um, StreamYard just has a couple of preset formats. It's, it's very sort of templated. You upload your images, it's cut and paste and you go. Um, and then- yeah, now, uh, Although I saw you putting a little slide up in the corner. Has StreamYard got that now? It didn't have it the last time I looked at it. Um, it so does. It has a couple of new bug features and overlay features. Uh, so there's a different overlay and a different overlay there. Right. Um, we yeah. can do a couple of other, you know, I was playing around earlier with different types of, you know, sort of effect overlays. Um, and it can hold a video clip up to five minutes. Um, so it is good sense. for people who like TV, that kind of approach to, to producing. By the way, this is, I'll just clear it out. This is my screen. So if I grab you and put you in here, so now there you go. My background is now Yvonne, um, <laughs> which does freak people out during Zoom meetings. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, so this is, you know, this is where I put my PowerPoint, my slides, whatever. Uh, if you want to get uh, really evil, let me go in. I'm going to put something in here. Um, this may take a little moment to get itself working. Okay, good. So here I am. No, sorry. I didn't want Burning Man. What's wrong? Why am I getting Burning Man? Uh, let me, well, it's okay in Burning Man. But here what we see is that I've made myself be followed by the ghosts of my past. Um, and uh, let me uh, let me change my background to something a little less uh, playa based. Um, uh, what, uh, oh, uh, how did I get the playa in there? This is great, though. Okay, you're you're yeah. exemplifying exactly what we were trading this morning. <laughs> yeah. Why do I? Uh, oh, hang on. Oh, I see. I'm using I'm using this one here, and we'll get rid of the playa, and we'll put in. Uh, this is my act. You know, this is the actual uh, shelves in my office, which is what everyone uses. And everyone, when they're doing calls, right? They usually have their bookshelf behind them. Uh, but I so I have a bookshelf behind me, but it's not really there. But Ooh. Uh, you know, I can be like an Indian god or um, anything of that sort. I have some even freakier ones, which I, I maybe shouldn't do for you right now. However, the real purpose of this is actually work. Uh, it is fun, but it's, uh, 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 you know, I just, uh, I wasn't even the first person I saw do this. Although it's funny, after I did this, and it really didn't take me that long to put this together, you know, maybe kind of a weekend. And there's a startup called, with a really weird name, um, um uh, which has got $5 million in funding to basically do what I did in the weekend. So uh, you will, you can get it that way. Um, but I would, uh, I recommend everyone to do this. If you are going to be making your living from speaking, not that you can do that anymore because nobody pays anymore. But if you are imagining doing that, uh, you definitely got to up your game. And yes, I, I have this one thing, which uh, where's, uh, uh, where, where I put, um, and and for those of you who are just joining us, we've been uh, testing a couple of, this is StreamYard that we're testing in right now. Uh, StreamYard.com is a tool that we use to create live interactive conversations for virtual conferences. And I uh, did a training earlier today for a uh, an international film festival for, for giant screen uh, filmmakers, producers, um, and distributors. So if you can imagine uh, having to train hundreds of speakers across many different conferences, uh, this is the challenge that uh, specialists like I have, and, and also Brad as a speaker and as someone who both convenes and, and works with um, many different educators. And now you can see what the corner of my room really looks like. This is the raw camera. Uh, it is definitely worth 40 or 50 bucks to go and get 
you know, something like I have behind me. Uh, yes, there's virtual green screen in StreamYard and in Zoom, but it's actually more distracting uh, if you're trying to do something professional. You uh, you, you want to just spend the money and get one of these. Uh, that's, it's not really that hard. Uh, it is better if you have a big space and you can put it a little further from your body. Uh, mine is only a couple feet behind my head, but I've made it work even doing that. And actually, I'll show you my favorite background that I do like to use. I talk, as Yvonne knows, I talk a lot about self-driving cars. And um, so I often give those talks from inside a self-driving car. So, because in the future, this is how we'll be, this is how we'll be doing our video conferences. I love it. And I wanted everyone just to kind of get a sense of how that becomes like a much more interactive way to deliver the same content. Um, but in a way that feels a little bit more um, like a like an interactive TV show or like something you would appreciate on your on your big screen. Um, I don't have the demo set up here, but I'll also recommend to people there's there's like three ways uh, that I do this or that I recommend to people to do this. So one is as I'm doing here with the green screen, you put your slides behind you and you're embedded in the middle of them. Another is to embed yourself into your slides. So uh, if you've ever used Prezi. Uh, it has a new version called Prezi Video. And what Prezi Video does, and I'm not set up with it right now, is it uh, it basically makes the background of the presentation transparent. So it lays it on top of your video. So what you do is it's, it's kind of like what Yvonne had. And you have all of your slides and so on appearing in the, in the air around you. They go in front of you if you don't make sure there's a space in the middle. You got to sort of make your slides and you got to leave a little box in the slides where your head will be, and then things go around you, and you can be like the people on Saturday Night Live with a box up, a box over here, you know, to the left of your head. That's a very common thing to do. So you don't need to use that though. OBS can do that as well, and uh, mm -hmm. I can sh I can show you what you do in OBS is you go into PowerPoint or Prezi, and you set the background of your slides to be bright green, the pure green color, same color of the green screen. It can, be, it can be any color you like, just not a color that's in your shirt. Like, for example, this shirt would be bad with a blue screen. Don't wear this shirt with a blue screen. Um, but <laughs> you will look funny. Actually, I have, like, I remember once I, was, I had a can of Mountain Dew, which is green, and I drank. Oh, actually, you can see that even here. Oh, there um, you go. A little bit of see-through drink. Something, something about the color of this is, is not meshing with the even Rob, it's it's... It's hilarious. Um, so you are in OBS studio now, right? Is, are you recording this in OBS? That's right. But so I'll just finish that thought, though, which is you, you take the, the slides, you make the background that you modify the slides a bit. This takes some work to leave background always in the bottom corner. And then you go into a mode very much like I'm doing here, where you put yourself a little smaller and in the corner. Actually, it's better if you sit sit to the right so you're like this. And actually, you want to get really good. I haven't done this yet, but I've now just set up a camera and a special tablet, teleprompter style, uh, and you stand up. And I'll tell you something, if you stand up, and so I'm not set up to do this right now, and frankly, I'm, I, I shouldn't admit this, but I'm not wearing pants. Uh, and uh, so I'm not going to stand up for you, and that's just to save you something. But uh, if you stand up in front of your slides, it looks really great. It, it really does create this illusion of you're in a big room and there's a big screen behind you on the stage and you're standing on the stage and you're talking to people and, and uh, it really uh, can improve the connection you get with the audience because it's impossible to get a connection with an audience over video without doing this kind of stuff. It, it is very challenging and there's a couple of different ways you can format it. Like this is the more traditional sort of Zoom format of slides with the speaker here. But what you're describing is really just taking that space behind you and making that your presentation space. Uh, Zoom, as of their new update, apparently lets you make a PowerPoint into your virtual background. And so yeah, you can I, I, I'm the one who got them, I'm the one who got them to do that. <laughs> of course you were, Brad. Uh, um, I, 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 I did a bunch that. of things. So it turns out the guy who's a project manager of Zoom, uh, I, I met him for other reasons and then started talking to him. And he said, oh, you went to Queens. Are you from Canada? I said, yeah. I said, oh, where in Canada did you grow up? He said, Mississauga. Where in Mississauga did you grow up? He said, Clarkson, this little tiny village that I grew up in. So he grew up a mile from me. So we formed a bond. And I said, look, I showed him this. And I said, you just got to make it so the virtual background is your screen. So I'm very glad they've done that. Well, um, Brad, I've been having a blast learning from you. This has been great. I have only been testing OBS Studio for a few months now, um, mostly with trying to do mixed reality across multiple virtual worlds. 
Um, where are some of the more interesting experiments you're seeing in this space? It sounds like you've been probing the depths of the, the streaming universe. You know, even though I'm an investor in an augmented reality company, I'm not a fan of, of current state of, of VR and AR for meetings and conferences. I think that um, here's something that you may find really weird. The, the real world is not 3D. We just think it is. Okay, we don't perceive the world in 3D. We have these 2D cameras and we make up a 3D story with our brains and we're very good at it. And the fact that someone is behind me when I'm in a meeting room is not a feature. It's a bug. I think that making it 2D and putting everyone together and seeing everybody is actually a better way to do it. And the other problem is that nobody can really tolerate wearing VR glasses for for very long. Um, and so you don't want to have your meeting, well, unless you want a very short meeting. I'm an all fan of short meetings, by the way. But if you want a very short meeting, have it in VR because people are going to want out of it. Uh, so uh, VR can be a good way to sort of help people realize the geometry of a space, if that makes sense. So Philip Rosedale, Philip Rosedale made Second Life. So he's, you know, everyone knows him as sort of a, one of godfathers of, of virtual reality. And Philip's offering now is completely the opposite of Second Life. It's called High Fidelity. You can go check it out. Uh, it is just a, a flat 2D space and you don't have video. You just have audio and you go in there and it's important to wear headphones. Frankly, it's always important to wear headphones, but it's particularly important in his. I shouldn't say that because it's always important to wear headphones, even in a regular Zoom. Uh, let, let me digress on a tangent on that, by the way, because speakerphone works pretty well for one-on-one -on -one and for what we're doing here. But as soon as you have a group, if you put on headphones, it doesn't need to do all that clipping of your voice when two people are talking. You can it, It's like really being in a room. And high fidelity is definitely better at that. You can have a group of people sitting together in high fidelity, and they can be talking and talking over each other, and they don't have to pause because no one can hear each other and say, okay, no, you go, no, you go, no, you go. Yeah. So what they do there is, though, they, they have a geometry of the space, and they use stereo effects so that people on your left sound like they're on your left, and people on your right, people on your right. and they focus on the audio quality. Uh, you also, yeah, you don't get that echo coming back. You don't have to mute yourself when you have headphones on. When you're in Zoom and any other thing, you don't have headphones. you got to mute yourself. It becomes much more formal. Now, sometimes formal is good. Sometimes everybody taking their turn is good. But for capturing a social sense for, you know, trying to get a, a human connection between people, it formal mm -hmm. is, is not good. So anyway, so that's high fidelity. There's now... Uh, I don't. I wouldn't call them clones of high fidelity because I think a lot of different people develop this independently. But there's one called uh, I think Glim or um, Spatial Chat, and another one called Online Town. Uh, so these yes. are all these are all built. To, they're putting some video in both of those um, to give you these. Uh, and what they do is they give you the vision of a, of a big room, and you can see people congregating. And you move up to the group of people, and then now you can start talking to them. And you move away from them, you can talk to other people, trying to. Right mirror what you had in a, a big hall of people. Right, so the virtual event uh, layouts in some of the game worlds, for example, don't allow for good spatialized audio, which creates great problems when you're a producer and giving people these sort of small cluster conversation zones. So for example, Brad, I produced the IEEE and VR conference. Um, this was in March. And what we noticed was that, uh, for example, with poster sessions, we had to put a maximum of six posters in a virtual space because each of those were going to have their own conversations. And the drop off, depending on which platform you're using, can be adjusted, but not in all ways and not across all platforms. And so you can't necessarily design spatialized audio on the desktop that's going to sound good on a mobile phone. And this is super challenging, like uh, Brendan at Future Stages, which is a template for building a Mozilla Hubs theater, uh, said that he had built all of these great sound uh, effects into that spatialized movie theater for watching movies in, in Mozilla Hubs, uh, but they didn't necessarily work and translate well to the final build. So yes, uh, there's, yeah. there's a number of design <laughs> challenges when you're, when you're thinking about spatialized audio and how to bring groups of people together for these sort of virtual events and conferences. I have a rude old guy's answer to that problem, which is don't use your phone. All right. I mean, when I and I say use a headset, right? Because it works without a headset. So one says, "Well, it works without a headset. So why do I need to use it? It works on a phone, but it doesn't 
we, we're, to, we're all locked in our houses. We need to make connections with other people. And so it really means you should make effort. And um, so, uh, you know, I think you got to sit down at a laptop or a desktop. You got to put earbuds on or headset. No Bluetooth headsets. Although the, the AirPod Pro is actually okay, but it's the only one that's okay. Every other Bluetooth headset is no good. And uh, Brad, did I get this URL right? Is it highfidelity.com for? I think I think it is, but you know, there, uh, th th there's this this thing called a search engine, which I'm sure people can. <laughs> Now, the funny thing is, Philip, Philip uh, High Fidelity was originally an avatar product. Uh, when he left Second Life, he wanted to build something with high-res avatars, and you'd talk, and the avatar would go blah, blah, blah. And so he, he's now moved away from that. It's interesting. I've seen a lot of people talk about what they call Zoom fatigue, and they actually get tired doing video conferencing with people. Some people blame it on the fact that video conferencing isn't perfect. Audio goes out sometimes. Video goes out sometimes. We don't like that. Some people blame it on the these little barriers to interaction. Other people think that it's just audio is uh, less fatiguing. Uh, th they can sit on audio for hours, they say, but they really can't sit on video for hours. And, uh, right. they, might, they, might, they might be right. And audio would be okay to do on your phone. So that's another. And, and this is really important for anyone who's creating a virtual experience of any type, because uh, same with IEEE, we found that most people prefer to watch via Twitch or the streaming uh, assets because sometimes they were just listening and not actually looking at every slide, looking at the talks. Um, the the in the information coming from your ears is sometimes easier to receive. Sometimes even while you're multitasking, for example. So conferences that uh, keep as much of the content in in your in your headphones as possible uh, tend to keep your engagement longer. Um, if you're doing a VR engagement, what Brad was saying is really important here because people do get fatigued after somewhere between 15 to 45 minutes usually. Uh, so things like the virtual Burning Man, metaverses, um, many of these are, are really needing to be shorter term experiences. And you can intersperse those with other types of streaming media content, a shared viewing room, a game room. You can, you can really blend all of these immersive experience zones together um, but you have to give people a chance to rest their eyes. Um, that's part of the, the thinking about how to produce an experience that's going to work for your people. I do agree with that. I hate webinars, though. Hate them, hate them, mm -hmm. hate them. Ask me what I think about webinars. Uh, <laughs> they totally isolate people from the, the audience, from the speaker. They isolate the audience from the audience. They do let you go and do your email while you're watching it. And if that's the purpose of the session, then fine. Do your email. But I uh, try to insist, I don't always succeed, that when I give talks these days, I want the people who are going to be in my audience to be on Zoom. That's the best one for this. I want them to turn their camera on. I don't want them going blank. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that even though, and if, by the way, and if they have a headset, I say that's fine. They don't mute their audio as long as they're going to be, you know, polite about it and not try and interject. One of the... Um, the magic things about being on a stage is you have a microphone the audience doesn't and the audience obviously can make noise when you're in a room and make on stage yeah. but there's an the the speaker has this sort of dominance from their microphone that makes that work anyway the reason i do this because yeah i may not hear them but i can see if they're smiling or bored or laughing or whatever and it is just so soul destroying to like try and be funny and i pretend that i'm funny but there you see Yvonne laughed at my little joke and that's great. That's human. That's wonderful, right? It's it's like, and Yvonne's seen me talk and she knows I try and make a connection with the audience. I try and make them laugh. I try to give them an emotion. And it's so important. It just doesn't work in the webinar. So if I can see the people respond to me and, and uh, oh my God, it's so much of a difference. And I wish people understood that. It is also the difference between some types of virtual experiences and others. And if you can see uh, and have a rich sort of multi-sensory experience with people that you already like and enjoy being around. It is so warm and rich. You can have cocktails together and it can be like yeah. a, a fun dance party. And, and we've had some really great times. Uh, the professor who's in our, our green room watching right now, uh, my co-founder, Scott Lovkov, has been producing these both corporate um, cocktail parties and uh, organizational picnics, uh, corporate training sessions. But they're all basically live streaming virtual events where, let's say, we're having 
watching a game show or we're having cocktails together or we're learning how to do something together. Uh, so that's, that's what we've been doing uh, since COVID, especially in terms of producing experiences that can bring people together um, and trying to figure out how to bring these tools together in an effective way. So we're still using Second Life occasionally, but we use Mozilla Hubs. We use, uh, let's say, half a dozen VR and XR platforms combined with StreamYard, OBS tools, uh, all of those other sort of uh, 3D asset generation tools as well. I'm going to do it in my column in Forbes. I'm going to do an article soon uh, saying that what the online conference people and, and video tools people have to do is accept that no one of them is perfect, accept that no one of them does everything that you need for an event and build an interoperability API so that I can be in one of them and hop to the other and it keeps the authentication and the name so that you know I don't have to like log in to the next tool. So I did for my, my uh, birthday party this year, I had eight different technologies in the party. And so you could go into Jitsi and Zoom and and uh, and Skype, and you could go into High Fidelity, and you could go to Discord, and all a lot of these different tools. But one of the things that didn't work was it's a pain to go between the tools, just because you know other than Jitsi, Jitsi has no authentication at all, which is is great. Uh, but the Skype didn't work at all because it went off, and then nobody could start it up again. And the Google Meet yes. had problems because the host has to be in there to let you into the room. So all of that, you got to glue these together. You got to accept that you're not the only one. And win. Now, I'll, your professor wants to come in, so I think uh, we should let him in. I'll give one little thing about my background here, which looks pretty boring, right? It's, it's uh, So this is a view from behind my green screen. So I put a camera on my porch, and I recorded the view of my street and my, uh, you know, Californian street here behind me. So it's as though the wall behind me were transparent and a window, which is like some studios. So uh, there you go. And I uh, love Scott. it. I love it. Scott, can we hear you? Can you hear me? I can. Hi. Hello there. Hey, good to see you. I don't have my mic on. Is this all right? I just hopped on here you last sound second. You all right. <laughs> I, just, I just ranted at the uh, not having a mic on. But I know. Like, I don't have my mic. Brad, I'm just really so you lucky. know, I'm in the middle of buying him a new one. So. <laughs> well, you know what? It, it, yeah. The crappiest headset mic, the ten dollars on Amazon, including shipping, mic is better than the mic in your laptop. Is what I tell people, right? Yeah, yeah. and if you have good recommendations on a nice uh, microphone headset combo, we're always looking, and yeah. uh, we're we're training lots of speakers right now. So lots of people are trying to figure out like what you know, what webcam to use, what mic to use. You know, how do I make it simple on people? The answer for webcam is annoyingly uh, is, is annoying because the right answer is a webcam which is sold out. The good webcams are all sold out because everybody suddenly wanted webcams. Most people agree, that even though it's eight years old, that Logitech C900 series 920, 930, uh, which used to be available for 50 bucks. Uh, now, you know, you'll have to lay out, if you can even get one, you'll have to lay out 100 bucks for it. Uh, and uh, they are surprisingly better than the others, even though their design is pretty old. So, uh, you know, you can also, for less money, turn your DSLR or point and shoot camera, in many cases, into a webcam. But it's, it's, I've done that. It is better than the C920, but it's work and you got to turn it on and all that other stuff. Yes, and it is dependent on your camera. The Sony's seem to have a decent workflow. The Canons are okay. Uh, my Fuji DSLR, it, it depends on if you're using the cam link uh, that Elgato yeah. uses, for example, to do that. I haven't uh, tried it, but there, there's, a num there's some apps for iPhones and Android phones that will turn them into webcams. Uh, they actually do have, the higher end ones, iPhones and so on, do have decent cameras in them. So uh, that might be worth exploring if you can't find a good camera any other way. And actually, nicer laptops have, have okay cameras in them. So, uh, But yeah, I, I'm on a C920 here. Uh, you're probably on something like it as well. Your, your, your video. I'm on the Brio. So the oh, Logitech the Brio. Even Brio yeah, that's uh, that's the the the, uh, the big brother of the C920. Right. So the Logitech Brio, um, it, it is packaged with the Lightform. So both yeah. Scott and I use Lightform technology for projection mapping sometimes with our backgrounds. And uh, Scott actually has a whole tutorial on on uh, YouTube on how to do this. But the webcam that came with the uh, Lightform is the Logitech mm -hmm. Brio. So it, it's doing double duty for us. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Another thing that uh, OBS will do is slideshows. So uh, I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm now we'll, we'll we'll tour the world as we're here. So yeah, I've been having fun with that. But again, mostly uh, getting your slides out there, putting having yourself. Uh, having eye contact. Oh, that's another thing to rant about, by the way. And I'm not always good about it, but try and make eye contact with the camera. So if you're a professional TV broadcaster, you've been training all your life, you look at the camera, not at uh, the other things, which is hard to do. But the trick you can do is if you have your camera on top of your mm -hmm. monitor, like most laptops have, mm -hmm. uh, is of course to put the person you're talking to in a little window and then drag them up. And I'll, I'll, I should do that. I'll drag you up a little mm -hmm. closer, Yvonne. Um, the real pro thing you can do is something called the interrogator. And yes. it's, uh, this is where you, um, you get a teleprompter and you put your camera behind the diagonal screen of the teleprompter. And then you put the face of the person you're talking to in the teleprompter. And then you look right at them. And again, right. human beings, human beings, we're really tuned to the idea. Is this person looking at me? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, and and you so I mean now now that I'm going to look at you guys, except now I can't see you because my eyes are away from you. But <laughs> um, so I'll I'll just turn around and I'll show you what I built. It's not yet fully uh, here, but um, uh, I love that you built one too. I have another colleague oh. who built an Interatron or interrogator. Oh, Interatron, yeah, it. that's right. No, Interatron. Uh, yeah, and uh, he, yeah, it, it, it flips your image, so you have to be prepared for that with text. Um, but otherwise, it, it's great for things like um, counseling, coaching, therapy, anything where you need to build rapport and intimacy through the camera. Um, that can be. So here's here's my cheap approximation of it, which is uh, I've just got an old tablet up there, seven inch tablet on a on a gooseneck, and then you can see that's the top of a tripod with a. Um, with a mount on, so the camera's not in there. And so I put the uh, tablet, so it's right next to the camera, and at that distance, it works okay. I've tested it out, so you don't have to have a teleprompter. And so this is a, a cheaper way to do that. So there's an app that you can get for your tablet uh, or your phone, which will make it be another screen to Windows. I don't know if you can get one for an app like that for the Mac, I think you can. So it becomes another screen. Oh, and now I've totally, uh, totally mucked up everything here, so this looks, <laughs> <laughs> this looks very wrong. I'll fix this when we're done. But anyway, so then you can put Zoom on it, or you can put your slides on it, or you can put uh, StreamYard, whatever you want to put on it, and you will then uh, be able to stand up and make eye contact. So that's uh, that's when you want to go into the real pro uh, of this. Definitely do this and and stare into people's eyes and uh, or be like Yvonne and yeah no. Um, <laughs> so one of the things is that you see, unlike me, Yvonne is pleasant to look at. And so um, it's uh, it's okay for you to stand up and and uh, and show that. Well, uh, this is what we do. So Scott and I have been uh, building a team at Playable Agency to build virtual events and experiences that help people have meaningful connections. And so a lot of the work we've been doing right now is really coaching with professionals across different verticals. So filmmakers today technologists tomorrow, engineers the next day, um, but figuring out how we're gonna you know, build intimacy through these webcams and through these uh, platforms that are brand new for all of us. I mean, we're all just kind of figuring it out on the fly and it, it's almost like vast improv. And so creating the, the magic circle that makes it available for us to do this improv together. So call me for these events, especially if they pay. And uh, <laughs> thanks for testing with us, Brad. This has been a lot of fun. I'm going to wrap up this broadcast. I'll see and... you. I'll I'll see you later. All right. Thank Absolutely. So much, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove you. And uh, I'm glad that uh, you were able to join us, Scott, as well. I'm going to go ahead and just put our. Uh, our HTTP up here, just in case people need to find us, because we are pretty easy to find. Um, at this stage, if you guys need help on anything you're doing, just, just hit us up. Um, at Playable Agency is also a great place to hit us up. And uh, Scott, was there anything else from uh, the, the trainings we've been doing lately that you think might be helpful just for anybody at home trying to create their own uh, content? Um, one of the things that I've definitely been enjoying, like leaning into the last several months, especially, is how to design space um, for folks, you know, on the other end to be heard and seen and, and felt, right? I mean, what Brad was talking about of, um, you know, I was like not really into the webinars, but more into like being able to see people in the Zoom room, you know, and asking like, look, keep on your, keep on your camera, like be present. 
Like, right, like that requires designing that into your experience, right? We're not just, we're not just broadcasting. We are really engaging live time right now. And that means designing for that space, inviting people in, valuing them, you know, you know like really making that eye contact and using their name. There's so many different ways um, to design for that. But, you know, it's, it's important, you know, people might be, um, you know, everybody wants to be heard and seen and valued. You know, we did a, um, I did a virtual company picnic the other day and um, we had bingo, right? And we couldn't hear everybody, but they could chat, right? They could chat, they could, they could share their, um, the, you know, that they want and they would hold their bingo card and we'd call out their name and there's leaping and yelling. And it was really fun. It was really fun to embrace the limitations of the medium to have an experience that felt and really felt like something that we all, you know, could remember. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of um, yeah, improv too, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, and and thinking about this as the future of interactive television. I mean, right. We're we're you know looking at companies like Netflix that are putting the call out. Let's do interactive television at scale across thousands of events generated by you. This is the new public media. You're in it right now. Uh, and you get to create it to be what you want it to be. So uh, we're here to support that. Just let us know what we can do. And uh, it's great to see all of you, by the way. Thanks for hopping in. Um, hey, y'all, and Natty and Laura and everybody else. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we're going to go ahead and end this. But have a great day. If there's anything we can support you on, you'll know where to find us. Yeah. That's it. It's playable. We're going out. Have